Hello everyone, welcome back to another Calamity video, and in this video I'm going to defeat the Brimstone Elemental, Plantera, and also Calamitous if I have time. Now I'm going to defeat Plantera first because the Brimstone Elemental has been a little challenging for me, so I thought once I defeat Plantera and get some Perennial Ore, that might give me the power boost that I need. So yeah, let's get right into this video. So as I said in the intro, I do want to defeat Plantera before any of the other bosses, but before I do that, I do want to show you some of the decorating I've been doing. First of all, I did place some furniture items in the main tower area. I think it looks a lot better. I don't actually remember if I showed you this yet. I might have showed you this in the last episode. Well, if I did, here it is again. And secondly, I did actually plant some trees out here. And as you can see, I painted the leaves. I think this makes a really cool effect. I can paint them whatever color I want. And it only paints the leaves. And I think it looks really cool. Okay, I think it's finally time to fight Plantera. Now I was originally going to have a time lapse for the Plantera fight, not the Plantera fight, the Plantera arena build, but I really didn't want to do that because Plantera is just so boring, at least building the arena for her. The boss is okay. I never really thought Plantera was that special. I know a lot of people like the Plantera fight, but I'd always just found it pretty easy and uh, not too much of a problem. Kind of boring too. It's just not most exciting fight for me. But the arena, I think everyone can agree. I mean, no one likes building Plantera's arena. Just so annoying to build in the jungle. So, I am seeing a couple changes from the vanilla fight. First of all, they are there... Oh, jeez, I'm destroying my words right here. There are these spore clouds that periodically spawn in the sky, kind of like the um, aquatic scourge fight. There were those red spores. And also there's some different, like usually she only shoots pink, I don't know, petals, I think like flower petals, but she also shoots green ones now. I don't know what the green ones do, maybe they inflict poison or something, but if they do inflict poison, it's not going to affect me because I have a ang shield. Wait, oh, I actually do still have my building accessory on, let's uh, swap that out. But yeah, it seems like this fight's going to go pretty quickly, and it's going to be pretty easy. Alright, second stage. Whoop. Surprised he got hit out of there, only getting hit once. My commentary kind of goes out the roof sometimes whenever I'm fighting a boss, just because boss fighting requires some uh, concentration, at least for me. My commentary is either non-existent, or it's just really bad. I mean, I think I'm doing okay this fight, but usually I just go completely silent and forget that I'm even recording. I guess that's just how easy Plantera is for me. I mean, Plantera did get me down to like 300 health or something. Like about half HP, a little less than that. I mean, that's pretty good. I think that's actually the worst pretty much any boss has done against me in this playthrough so far, but... But I mean, I guess there's still some time to uh, absolutely murder me. Uh, never mind, she only has a thousand health left. Alright, let's go. Plantera down. Let's get that loot bag, and yeah, let's check out the loot. Alright, let's crack open this treasure bag and see what we get. Actually, let's read the uh, lore first. Well done, you killed a plant. It was used as a vessel to house the spirits of those unfortunate enough to find their way down here. I wish you luck in dealing with the fallout. Favor this item to gain increased item grab range. I don't know what the fallout is, but I guess we'll find out. Alright, let's open this treasure bag. Boom. Alright, we got the, um... I don't remember what they're called. Developer vanity sets? Something like that. The jungle key? That's good. Living Shards. I actually heard about those. I think these are good, and I definitely think I'm going to need those. Uh, the Plantera Mask, Temple Key, Spore Sack, and the Nettle Burst. I think, yeah, this is a vanilla item. Alright, so we really didn't get anything too useful except these Living Shards. Actually, let's see what we can craft these shards. I think they're pretty good. Alright, the Terror Blade. I didn't know you needed shards to craft the Terror Blade. Life Freed, apparently. Um, oh, the Terra Disc. 261 rogue damage. What do we got? 
I know how to get these two things. I have that. The Thorn Cacrum is really easy to get. We have the shards. Now how do I get this thing? The Flamerang, Ice Boomerang, Light Shard, and Dark Shard. Okay, we can actually craft the Terra Disc. I don't know if it's good, but we're going to have to see. Alright, so now that I defeated Planetara, let's mine some Perennial Ore and get that time lapse going. So after that time lapse, I got many perennial bars and I crafted the Reaver set. As you can see, it has 37 defense in total along with my other accessories, which isn't that much, but I actually do a lot of damage and I also have a lot of movement speed with this set, so it's pretty good. Um, it's just, just a bunch of rogue bonuses like increased rogue damage and increased movement speed. It does give 20, uh, plus 20 max life, which is really good, I really like that touch. And yeah, there's not too much else to this armor set. I also crafted this Necklace of Vexation. It has 20% increased damage when under 50% life. And also all attacks inflict Cursed Inferno and Venom while wearing Reaver armor. So that gets a buff from wearing the Reaver armor, which is good because I'm wearing the Reaver armor. And I think the main effect of this necklace is also pretty good. And the final thing is I crafted the wings right here. It's way better than my previous wings. I'm pretty sure before I had the Daedalus wings or something like that, I crafted it along with the Daedalus armor. And this has way more mobility, as you might be able to tell. I don't know how easy it is to tell on the video, but for me, you could I could definitely feel that it's way better. And yeah, this also gets 15% increased movement speed while wearing the Reaver armor. Now, the reason I'm not showing you me crafting this armor is because I actually forgot to unmute my mic after recording that time lapse. And yeah, there's no audio on the clip, so you get this instead. Okay, everyone, so off camera, I actually managed to get the materials for the Terra Disc. Now, the Flamerang was actually really difficult for me to get just because I couldn't find an enchanted boomerang in any of the underground chests that I looked for, but I did get it eventually. Also, keep in mind that if you are gonna craft this Terra Disc yourself, both of these boomerangs have to be the rogue damage variant. If they're melee, then they will show up as the melee recipe when you try to craft it. So yeah, let's craft this Terra Disc. Oh, it's already flawless too. That's the best reforge for rogue weapons. I also crafted this Mangrove Cacrum. So um, that's pretty good. This thing actually has a lot of DPS, more than my opponent jammer. So let's try this out. So it seems worse than the Cacrum right here. But I think that's just because of its, um, just because I'm attacking a dummy. I'm pretty sure when I throw this at a boss or an enemy, it will actually have a chance to generate several discs, as you can see from the tooltip. So let's actually try it on an improved dummy from the Louis AFK mod. Okay, so let's do a damage test. I have the improved dummy right here. Let's spawn it in, and let's just put some uh, damage on this guy. Okay, the boomerangs that are like extra, the projectiles you could call them, aren't really doing that much. Maybe if I, like, move around? Okay, when they go through the dummy, it does insane damage. As you can see, I'm getting, like, 25 damage. 25,000, rather. 
But I don't know if this is just a thing with the dummy or if this will be a thing with the boss. I'm not too sure. Let's just try out this mangrove cacrum too. Yeah, like 1500 damage about. Alright, well, I don't think this improved dummy test is actually too accurate. So I think I'm going to try it on the brimstone elemental. And if I can't defeat the brimstone elemental now with this improved gear, then I'm just going to skip it until later. Okay, so I'm ready for my final attempt of the brimstone elemental. One thing I did notice about the terror disc is first of all, they can go through blocks. And also, you can only have three of them out at once. And the projectiles are really slow. So if I'm like fighting a boss, throwing them out and everything, and I'm dodging, I can actually outrun the disc, which, pre which prevent me from actually attacking, which could present a problem in the future. But the mangrove cacrum does not have that problem because I can throw as many of them out as I want. So let's just get into this fight. We'll see what works best. Then we'll uh, judge the weapons after the fact. All right, am I all the way zoomed out? I am, okay. All right, let's get some good hits with the terror disc. All right, we did we get some good damage there. Now the I am actually outrunning the terror disc, which was a worry of mine. And the extra projectiles that come off of the terror disc isn't doing nearly as well on an actual boss as they were on the dummy. That's something to keep in mind. Let's actually test out the Kakram now. It is worth noting that I'm not using any buffs right now either. I actually took a lot of damage right then. I thought I was going to die for a second. Alright, I do think the Mangrove Kakram is better than the Terror Disc. It has more range too. Ooh. I might actually die here. There's a good chance. I'm going to go on the defensive and stop attacking until I can uh, heal up. I think that is something that has to happen right now. Oh, that's a lot of projectiles. Seventeen HP. Eighteen seconds on the heal, though. Ah, dang it. So, because I wasn't actually properly buffed that time, I decided to not count that fight and to just try again with proper buffs. As you can see, I got a ton of buffs right here. Let's buff up, start the fight, and try again. This is going to be my last attempt, though, because if I can't beat it with all these buffs, then I probably won't be beating it anytime soon. Maybe after Gollum, depending on his drops. Well, I don't know. I feel like we're doing some some good damage. I'm actually going to use mostly the Kakram, because it seems to work better than the Terror Disc. Which is actually really surprising, because the Kakram is a lot easier to get than the Terror Disc. Alright, we got Adrenaline and Rage. Let's activate those at the same time. Just get a ton of damage in. I don't know how well that actually worked. Oh, I'm using Ice Stars. I mean, it kind of worked, but I didn't want to use those. The fact that we actually got Adrenaline in is really good, because Adrenaline does a ton of damage. Okay, so the Elemental is at about half HP. It should be using the Death Star laser attack sometime soon. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well for this fight. Adrenaline again. That was a bunch of damage. Oh, for some reason I couldn't move right then when I was right in the laser's path. I keep getting stuck on the ceiling. I think that's just because of my increased mobility with my wings. Because I never had that problem before. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're. I think I'm definitely gonna win this fight. I I have no doubt now. Well, we got about five thousand HP left. Oh yeah, we got this fight in the bag. Get a final few hits in, and it should be dead any second now. Let's go. All right. I'm so happy to have that over with. Let's see. Some of the buffs actually didn't work. Just these two, looks like. I don't know why, but that sometimes, that sometimes happens. All right. Now let's actually check out the loot. I did forget the lore down at the bottom, so I'll have to get that after. But yeah, let's open this treasure bag. Boom. Essence of Chaos. Brimstone Flame, such as the Vanity Item. Um, the Abaddon reduces the damage caused by Brimstone Flames debuff. It's just a material, and it's an accessory. I'm not going to be using that, but I think if I can combine it with something else, this could be useful. Spiked something drops Brimstone Fireballs from the sky occasionally. This could be good if the Brimstone Fireballs are... There's, there's like a lot of them. Let's actually equip that instead of the Worm Scarf and see if it activates anytime soon. And this thing, Charred Relic Equipable, chain contains a small amount of brimstone. Okay, so we did see the brimstone, what was it called, fireballs something? Yeah, brimstone fireballs. Can see them, they do occasionally just strike the ground. I don't think they're that good, unless they strike enemies directly, then it's not worth using. Now, is this a pet, maybe? It does look like a pet, let's actually check it out. That's pretty cool, I like that pet. Oh, well, we got Brimstone Slag. That's just a bunch of that one block. And then the Seething Discharge. It's a magic weapon, so it's not that useful to us. This is actually really cool. I love this weapon. If I was a mage, I would definitely be using this. Alright, let's uh, get the lore. Alright, so I went down to the Underworld and got the two lore items. I got the Brimstone Crag. Ah, this place. The scent of broken promises, pain, and eventual death is heavy in the air. Now that's just the lore on the biome. It's not even lore, it's just some weird, I don't know, piece of info. Brimstone Elemental. The most powerful of the elementals, bent on exacting revenge upon the bloody inferno that demolished her home. Finally put the rest, she will suffer no longer from grief caused by the death of her people. Favorite this item to improve the inferno potion effect. Alright, so I was just looking at the drops for the Brimstone Elemental, and it turns out there are actually no rogue weapons from the Brimstone Elemental. Which is pretty bad in my opinion, considering that Calamity added this class, and this is a Calamity boss, but... I mean, I do have pretty good weapons now. Let's actually look at the records. Yes, 1 kill and 12 deaths on this boss. You can see just how many times it took me to kill this boss. It's actually a lot less than... What, what boss took me a long time? I think the Hive Mind did. I think I did better in this boss than the Hive Mind. But yeah, the Brimstone Elemental for me is by far the most difficult boss in Calamity that I fought this playthrough. And even in just Terraria in general. I don't think I ever had this difficult of a time with a boss. But yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive for this Brimstone Elemental. It's not even supposed to be like a mainstream boss, I don't think. I think it's just a step up from a mini boss, really. Okay, so now that I have defeated the Brimstone Elemental, I should be able to mine this Charred Ore with my Pick Saw. So let's actually just teleport down here if I can. Will it let me? I can. Okay. Mine through this Brimstone Slag, and yes, I can mine the Charred Ore. Let's actually mine all this with Vein Miner. Alright, Charred Ore. I got 84 of it from just that. It's very easy to get, besides the whole defeating Brimstone Elemental part. Let's actually go up and see if there are any useful things oh, that I can make with this. Now I'm guessing I can craft it into bars? Maybe not. Maybe I don't need to craft it into bars. Put it in here. Oh, I can make the unholy cores. I'm pretty sure that's useful. The ancient altar used for special crafting. I don't know if I'm ever going to need that, but I guess I know it's there now. And then the ancient monolith can be placed. So the only real useful thing is the Unholy Core, and I think that is pretty good. Like if I get some Hellstone, I should be able to 
and craft some of that and maybe see what the unholy cores are made of. Um, where can I actually make this? That, that's the ancient altar. Maybe it... Okay, it's at the forge. Alright, let's see the recipes for these. Oh, I can actually make brimstone armor? Is it a magic set? I think this is specifically a magic set. I mean, this is a rogue helmet. But, like, the chest piece is a magic set. Unless there are different chess pieces. I don't know, I'll have to do more research on that. But let's see if there are any rogue weapons. That's magic, summon. This is rogue, brimblade. Oh, I have heard about the brimblade before. I actually think I talked about it too. I don't know if it's actually going to be good anymore, because we did get some substantial upgrades since I last talked about this. But we'll craft it to see if it's useful. Okay, so I got two more unholy cores, and I'm actually going to craft the brimblade and test it out. Uh, I guess I'll just go down to these dummies here. See, see how it runs. It has extremely low DPS compared to my other weapons. I wonder if this thing stacks. I don't think it stacks, but I might as well try considering it's so cheap. But if it does stack, then that'll make it a lot better, I think. But I kind of doubt it. It doesn't seem like a weapon that would stack. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, I guess the reforge would do a lot for this weapon. I guess I can reforge it just to see if that makes too much of a difference. Alright, now it has 101 rogue damage. Okay, it does about a about 1000 DPS on the dummies. Or at least it can reach 1000. But I think the one thing that it says in the tooltip is that the blade splits on enemy hits. So I think that might be a lot of DPS just because it splits then comes back to you and hits like three times or something like that. So let's actually try it on the improved dummy and see how the split does. I can't actually really see the effect. Oh, I see it. It just hits and comes right back to you. I guess because it doesn't pierce, it's the splitting doesn't really make too much of a difference. I mean, if I circle around the enemy, I can hit with a ton of these blades and do a ton of damage, but that's really not practical in an actual boss fight. Oh, the Leviathan always is really weird whenever it cycles through in the stummy. Yeah, so I think the Cacrum is better than the Brim Blade and the Terra Disc, but it is useful to have this Terra Disc because I can craft the Elemental Disc, which is a lot better. I need the Terra Disc and the Cacrum, actually. I think it might be a post Moon Lord thing. Well, it's definitely a post Moon Lord thing, but I don't know if it's like how far past Moon Lord it is. I'll have to see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next Calamity video. Bye, everyone.